Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discuss one of the important discussion on memorandum of association this topic is very important for corporate law point of view i am dr jaswan saini associate professor department of law present this topic for your benefit first we discuss the learning outcome of this discussion after go through in this discussion we understand what are the benefit of this document and you would be able to understand the concept of memorandum of association their purpose contents and registration how much important it also discuss the alteration that can be carried out in the memorandum of association once a document frame according to the circumstances according to the demand of time these documents may be altered accordingly learners will grasp that the memorandum of association is a vital legal document for companies and this document defining the boundaries objectives powers and limits it provides a comprehensive understanding of the memorandum of association and this document is a significant document and component of this document prove in itself that how much they are important and this document is very important to governing the operations and limitations of the company under the companies act this document basically a hierarchy prove this slide prove what's the hierarchy of the documents so first number given to company act company act 2013 number given to first and second number given to memorandum of association third place given to article of association and fourth place given to special resolutions special resolutions and fifth place goes to simple resolutions in case of companies we are not take even a single step without the aid and help of the meetings meetings play very important role in the functioning of governing body being a corporate entity you are not supposed to be act without meetings meetings play a vital role in the functioning of governing bod uh, governing bodies in a body corporate this is the hierarchy of the documents and this hierarchy prove that when we prepare a simple resolution that should be regard given to all these rest of the documents it means when simple resolution passed by any company that maintain the harmonized relation with rest of the documents if we we start the reverse form when special resolution passed by the company that should be maintain the harmonized relation with the rest of the documents a special resolution must obey the rules regulation bylaws provided by article of association memorandum of association or the companies act and article of association when you draft you must follow the contents and rules defined in memorandum of association and company act 
and memorandum of association when you draft or altered that should be maintain the harmonized relation with the company act 2013 so in this hierarchy of the documents company act 2013 is the supreme document and every document who draft in consonance of this document they should maintain the harmonized relation so that's the hierarchy of the documents so we are discuss here memorandum of association memorandum of association must maintain their cordial relation with the company act for the knowledge point of view you remember this hierarchy play very important role in the functioning of company and without following this hierarchy we not presume that the company govern their proper relations company govern properly in the particular field company act 2013 first position given and now we coming on memorandum of association memorandum of association is the charter of the company that is treated as constitution of the company constitution charter or grand norms when we use these three words these words reflected that this document is important document this document is vital document in the functioning of a corporate body this word charter use when east india company establish this east india company establish under the charter of the uh, queen and nowadays when we govern by the codified legal system so we govern by the constitution constitution of india is the responsible to maintain the law and order in the entire country and constitution of india is that document who define how government frame how government work and how other laws are frame how other laws are designed what's purpose performed by these laws so memorandum of association is treated as constitution of the company in case of statutory bodies the constitution of the company the act in itself define the rules and regulation regarding the bodies but in case of companies incorporated under the companies act 2013 the constitution is memorandum of association that's treated as basic law that's grand norm it when we declare any law any document as an basic law it means that's not altered with ordinary circumstances that's not to be altered in ordinary circumstances it is a document which among other things define the area within which the company can operate this document fix the limits limits of working this document fix the boundaries of working and this document in itself prove that what's the limitation of functioning of a company and a company if going beyond this limit the company is act treated as null and void company is act treated as ultra virus ultra means beyond virus means power so this document fix the boundaries fix the limit and that's fix your purview that's fix your umbrella under this umbrella you need to be act it is the foundation foundation on which structure of the company is built for example you as construct a building for this particular purpose how much strong you construction frame how much strong you foundation frame that's play very important role in the development of entire building or establishment of entire building so this document is the treated as foundation of this structure of the company and without foundation you imagine what's the fate of the building on the same pattern this memorandum of association define the boundaries limits or the working of the company and how the stranger maintain the relation with the company 
this document define the relationship with the strangers how outsiders maintain the relation with the company in define the company's activities company's activities if perform by beyond this limit which fixed by memorandum of association these activities are null and void these activities are no legitimate activities in the eyes of law and they are not survive in the eyes of law and relation with outside world outside world you may be say stranger when any outsider maintain the relation with the company he maintain these relation on the basis of this document and we presume that when you enter into any contract with the company or when you maintain any relation with the company you first consult this document because this document in itself prove that they are the boundaries of company limitation of the company and company governed by two human agents one is known as member and another is known as board of director member decide the policies of the company and board of director act in the light of these policies which decided by members in the annual journal meeting and board of directors when act in the light of the policies decided by members in journal meeting those policies must be within the limit as fixed by this memorandum of association and once you enter into a contract with the company without consulting this document then you not take any plea of exemption or not take plea of excuse we presume law presume that first you consult this document before enter into any contract with the company and this document particularly designed to protect the stranger it means when you consult this document automatically you not enter into any such agreements which are against their powers board of directors sometimes exercise their power beyond their limits and strangers not aware about their limits so this document basically designed for this purpose first you consult this document then you enter into the contract as per section 256 the act define the definition of memorandum of association memorandum of association means memorandum of association of a company as originally framed or as altered from time to time in pursuance of any previous company law or this act so this definition in, in itself prove that how much this document is important as a memorandum of association originally framed if we gave the one point to this originally frame it means at the time of incorporation you supposed to be frame this document memorandum of association later on we discuss if any association or any proposed company not interested to frame their own documents they are allowed as per the scheme of the companies act 2013 you adopt the model memorandum of association which provided in the schedule 1 schedule 1 discuss a b c d e they are the five model memorandum of association provided in schedule 1 schedule 1 basically first a b c d e documents relates to memorandum of association model memorandum of association and the particular company relates to which category the specified here which model memorandum of association you need to be adopt the model form is available you fill up your name of the company 
and this document automatically becomes your own document. So, originally framed or altered. When we are talking about the altered document, the same force is applicable with the altered document as that originally framed. You framed originally or after alteration, there is no any difference, the equal force is applicable behind the same. Time to time, the third point if we gave to this word time to time, it means according to the circumstances you change the document. For example, in 1950 when we adopt our Indian constitution, till this date we amend this Indian constitution more than 120 times. It means according to the demand of time, according to, to the circumstances, if there is a requirement to change, we change the document and the equal force is applicable behind this document as this document originally framed. In pursuance of any previous company law, before this Company Act 2013, the Company Act 1956 was applicable. If you amended according to the provisions of Company Act 1956, that is equally applicable. Law or this act, this act means presently the act applicable company act 2013. So, definition which provided by section 256 very clear the importance of this document. This document is very very important for obtain the certificate of incorporation from the ROC because the life of the company basically start from the certificate of incorporation. Once a certificate of incorporation issue by the registrar of companies, that is become a conclusive evidence of all questions. After that, no one raise any question on the same. Purpose of memorandum of association to declare the reason for the company's formation. These words in itself a prove the logic here that reason means grounds. When we are talking about the reason, reason means grounds and a being a student of law, you know reason should be there behind your any decision. Being a administrative officer, being a judicial officer, if your decision not supported by reasons if your decision not supported by basic grounds, that decision not survive in the eyes of law. What is the reason of formation of a company? This document define, this document declare. Reasons, the reasons also known as justification. Justification prove that you are according to logic working there you are exported by some logic. Reasons, speaking order, logics, they indicate that you have sufficient grounds to declare the same. And on the basis of this document, investor understand the company's activity. So, one point is understand, second point is company's activities. So, this document indicate that once you decide to invest your hard savings in company, first you understand from this document. Either you are saving in the proper direction or in rightful direction or not. So, understanding develop on the part of an investor through this document, that is the main point who establish the importance of this document what type of company's activities performed by the company that is defined in this document. And investor understand with this document, it means very clear that once I go through in this document, I develop my understanding what type of activities performed by the company. So, this document prove itself that is a very vital role play by this document in the life of company. And this document know through this document prospect of their investment. Investors when invest 
their hard savings in any business or partnership firm or company or in any form of business the main intention behind their investment was to earn more money when investors invest their investment what's the prospect of their investment either investment to earn more money or not either the investment in rightful direction or not either the investment for benefit of their own savings or not and most and prime most duty of any investors first they ensure that safety of the funds if you earn more money but there is no any safety of the funds that's not suggested by any investor or when any investor invest the first duty on their part they ensure investment should be in the safe hands and investment for future prospects it means the investment earn more money from this investment memorandum of association is a public document so before discuss further on this document this bird public document prove that this document is very very essential document for the incorporation of a company public document not define anywhere but general presumption is there any document who available in public office that's consider as public document and which offices are consider as public offices which run by the funds of government if any document available in the private office you not access those documents and if you remember rti act introduce right to information act 2005 with the main objective of this act access the public document so this act very clearly define that any document available in the public office this document is considered as public document and public document you access public document you access after pay the minimum prescribed fee and if you obtain this document it means you first consult this document before enter into any contract or any agreement with the company so this document categorized as public document which mean it can be read by anyone available to anyone access of this document is everyone and every citizen is allowed to access this document this question may be comes in your mind how i access these documents so very simple you open your account in the login with the ministry of corporate affairs and there in this portal when you login you after pay the minimum prescribed fee you access this document or you may take the copy of this document so these documents are available online in the office of ministry of corporate affairs through this website or this document also available in the office of registrar of companies you may take the copies of the same under rti act or you may be direct access through maintain your login account in the ministry of corporate affairs website so everyone access these documents without any uh, fulfill the rigorous formalities prospective investors will know the exact purpose of which their investment may be used so this documents is very beneficial for investors on the basis of this document the investor decide either they invest in this particular business or company if you invest without consulting this document your investment may be safe or may be not safe but once you consult this document then you take decision either you invest or not if you are investment decision according to your priorities then that 
make sure you earn more money from your investment and your investment must be in safe hands so two objectives of every investor before investment they kept in their mind one is safety of funds second earn more money if both if both objectives if fulfill the purpose due to this consultation of this document so this document in itself prove that that's define that's affect your decision and how you take the decision that's depend on this document and this document ensure investors their investment are not used for any unknown purpose this word unknown purpose prove that that document fix the boundaries that document fix the limits for whom limits for board of directors board of directors are not supposed to be act ultra virus if they going beyond the powers given to them which provided under memorandum of association it means their acts are null and void their acts are uh, from very beginning are not legitimate acts so purpose of company defined by this document and if board of directors apply your fund for unknown purpose this activity make them personally liable make them they are liable to face the consequences and consequences are rigorous act provide the punishment for those acts which board of directors perform beyond their powers and we discuss later on what type of penalties imposed by the act on the board of directors if they doing such acts which are beyond their limit which they cross their boundaries which are not supposed to be act by the board of directors which are against the public policy which are against the company act or which are against the any other law which are which are applicable in the indian scenario so we discuss later on so two cases we discuss here to develop our understanding about the importance of memorandum of association first case decided by supreme court constitutional bench this case is decided by constitutional bench and being a student of law or being a responsible social person you know constitutional bench preside over by a senior most judge of the supreme court and five judges are sitting there to decide any matter and as per the scheme of the indian constitution this is the largest bench you just imagine or you just apply your mind in one of the case keshavan and bharti case 13 judges was there but i say here there are five judges bench scheme is the scheme of the indian constitution that is the highest bench it means more than five judges if deputed in any bench by the chief justice of india that's depend on discretion of the chief justice of india this matter basically relates to settle so many issues in this case the question related to the call of extraordinary general meeting by the members directors were not interested to call this eogm but various principle laid down in this case and this case is known as leading case on this point of extraordinary general meeting as well as on importance of memorandum of association supreme court has compared memorandum of association as an constitution this case define memorandum of association of any company equivalent to indian constitution constitution is the basic law that's grand norm not altered in ordinary circumstances and we required one law as a specific law one law as a basic law 
and all laws derive their validity from this main basic law. So, Indian constitution is a basic law in the Indian legal system and rest of the laws drive their validity from this Indian constitution and the importance of memorandum of association held by constitutional bench of Supreme Court of India that this memorandum is equivalent to constitution. A company in the some respect that is equivalent to constitution an institution like a state functioning under the its basic constitution consisting of the companies act and the memorandum of association. So, memorandum of association of any company is the basic vital document and equivalent to main document or that designated categorized as a main document and equal importance given to this document like your Indian constitution. It means five judges bench held that the this document is very very important and one another case which de uh, decided by house of lord in 1875 ashbury railway carries and iron company limited versus rich in this case lord keynes decide or observed that the memorandum of association of company is its charter you may be say charter, you may be say constitution, you may be say important, you may be say vital, all things indicate that this document is very, very important document and company not survive, company not take even a single step without this document. This document is an essential document to formulation of a company. And a registrar of company not allowed to be incorporate a company without this document. Lord Keynes held that this memorandum of association of companies charter and define the limitations. Limitation means boundaries. If you cross these boundaries, you commit an uh, offence. On the part of board of directors that amounts to commit an offence if they cross their limit, cross their boundaries which laid down by this document. It contains the both which is affirmative and negative. It means what to do that is defined by this one, what not to do that also defined by this document. Affirmative in positive sense, negative in reverse sense. It means what to do that is defined by this document, what not to do that is also defined by this document. So, this document prove that that is a important document for the functioning of a governing system of a body corporate. Memorandum of company shall be in respective forms specified in model documents. If you are not interested to frame your own document this memorandum of association you may be adopt which provided in this schedule 1 table A, B, C, D, E. These are the modal forms are available, prescribed forms are available. You only need to be fill up the name of the company, this document becomes your own document. The memorandum of association is most essential prerequisite for incorporating any form of company under Companies Act 2013. So, to develop the understanding of all of you, you understand with these five clauses which use here most essential, one word is essential, but here we use most essential. It means without this one there is no any incorporation allowed. Second prerequisite before incorporation you need to be submit this document before the ROC to obtain the certificate of incorporation. And this document for requirement for what purpose? Requirement for incorporation purpose. A company not come into the existence without obtain the certificate of incorporation. So, for the purpose of incorporation we required this document. 
and which type of companies required this document every type of company required this document every form of company either company limited by share either company limited by guarantee or a company unlimited company or one person company or producer company every type of company may be there they required this document and this document under the companies act 2013 and any other act also who deals before this company act 2013 they also establish the same importance of this document so what are the contents of this documents contents are defined in section 4 and very first is here name clause here basically five clauses are defined in this memorandum of association but majority of the jurists in the favor of five but some jurists in the favor that sixth clause is subscription clause and seventh clause is nominee clause so we discuss later on what's the importance of this sixth and seventh clause but we start from this one name clause section 4 deals with name clause name to be reserved with registrar of companies so you may be decide any name of the company but there is no any meaning of such name unless that registered by roc registrar of companies name is the symbol of existence you just imagine one situation one imaginary situation here when you know a person there is no any name of this person how you call this person how you maintain the communication with this person without the name so that is very difficult to run smoothly the business of any entity without their name name is the symbol of existence name is the part of your goodwill and goodwill is a saleable item and copyright trademark other rights are also attached with the name name of the company and with limited this word limited indicate that the liability of the member is limited or unlimited if we only word use limited that's indicate company is a public limited if the company is a private limited then it's an essential here to mention in the end company is a private limited and in case of public limited company you only mention limited that is enough and private limited in last word in the case of private company should be mention private limited so private limited indicate the company is organize the funds from their own sources that's mention here with this word private limited and not applicable in case of companies registered under section 8 if any company obtain the certificate of incorporation under section 8 companies special type of companies those companies no need to be mentioned this word limited and in the end of their name their name and with some other words like foundation club association chamber so these your uh, gym khana club fikki they are the example of section 8 companies these companies incorporated for some special purpose to advancement of so society to advancement of charity purpose for the benefit of society for the public utility services these type of companies establish and one restriction is applicable on these companies they are not allowed to be distribute the profit among the members further they need to be invest their profit if uh, in the business so in case of opc you are bound to be mention in the end of this companies one person company purpose of here to indicate that the persons must be acquainted with the same which type of this company whether the company is a private public one person producer or section 8 special companies purpose here to aware the 
society to aware the public to aware the investors who are ready to invest their money in these companies shall be read within bracket within bracket you may be say opc or one person company that's clearly mentioned that this company run by a single person you are not supposed to be registered with undesirable name undesirable name mentioned in rule 8 of the companies incorporation rules 2014 and 1950 act emblem and name prevention of improper use act 1950 also deals which type of names not allowed any name which is resembling name resembling name means those names which indicate that this company already exist and that's resemble with the earlier name so you are not supposed to be incorporate with such names or any name which indicate the name of government which name of government or which name which indicate that that is the department of government in if your name represent the name of prime minister or you are um, president or if your name of the company re relates to the awards which declared by indian government as gallantry award or other awards for example paramveer chakra ashoka chakra kirti chakra you are not supposed to be registered with such names which are restricted or you are not supposed to be apply for such names or that's known as undesirable name which indicates the name of regulators for example here rbi reserve bank of india sebi security exchange board of india irda so such names you are cbi ed if you are use such names that's known as undesirable names you, registrar of companies not allowed to be incorporate or register such names identical names are such names for example this company is adidas and you if use this name adibas adibas so that is a resembling name so if any company use the similar name or resembling name that's not allowed in the eyes of law that's not permitted by roc so identical name resembling name with the existing company or any impression any impression that company is in way connected with or having patronage of the state unless previous prior approval of central government obtained so central government impose the restrictions and the authority here for this purpose of this act is central government if central government permit to use any name that's allowed with the prior permission of central government so that's the policy of law is also that is a public policy also if any company run with the name the another company proposed company not supposed to take the name of such company because company existence through this name company reputation company goodwill from this name and that's not supposed to be take the same name that's also violation of law and violation of equity also the second clause which is known as registered office clause this clause specify the name of state in which registered name of state where you apply for registration memorandum of association only required the name of state which your registered office is situated and that's jurisdiction of the roc and your registered office both are same that's relates to each other and this clause sometimes known as situation clause but majority of the jurist in the favor that this clause is known as registered office clause and state of registered office is required to determine the office of registrar and applicable stamp duty for incorporation for two purposes we required the jurisdiction second stamp duty 
how much stamp duty is applicable on the particular documents that is need to be paid before apply for registration. Companies are required to have registered office within 15 days from their incorporation. Registered office you mentioned even after 15, uh, within 15 days after obtain the certificate of incorporation, but memorandum of association must clarify that state where your registered office situated. So, intimation to registrar about the detail of registered office, you must communicate within 30 days from the incorporation or 15 days from the change of any office. If you change your office, you required to intimate within 15 days and first information you gave within 30 days. So, three things you remember with the registered office clause how you altered registered office. If you altered your registered office in same city, the different rules are applicable. If you altered from one district to another district, one district to another district, the another rules are applicable. And if you want to change from one state to another state, one state to another state, then different rules are applicable. There are three situations to change your registered office from one place to another place, one location to another location. If you change in same city, then board of directors resolution is enough. If you change from one district to another district, then board of directors resolution plus the resolution of members along with the prior approval of regional director. Third, if you change your registered office from one state to another state, there we require the prior approval of prior approval of central government through the tribunal plus here special resolution for the same and along with the same you require the approval of creditors. creditors and in this case, the central government view also entertain before grant any approval by the tribunal. So, this is the very typical aspect here when any company want to change their registered office from one state to another state. Why we entertain the objections of central government in this case when we change the location from one state to another state? there is a loss of revenue also and governments run through revenues. The main source of revenue uh, from the side of government is here, how the corporate taxes are there. So, this office clause you change that is a very complicated process here and you need to be fulfill the all compliance here. Third clause is here object clause the object for which the company is proposed to be incorporated. Object is that part of this document who decide how the investors take decision. On the basis of this object clause, investor decide either they apply in this particular company or not. I differentiate one of the position here, one is one company is engage in towel manufacturing. They manufacture the towels. One company established to manufacture the medicines, medicines of cancer. So, in the present scenario in which company I apply my savings, I prefer in that company where there is a more chance of earn more money. So, this company who established to manufacture the medicine for cancer, there may be chance more bright to earn more money. But if a company established to manufacture the towels, there may be less chance in comparison of this company. So, the company incorporated with what purpose that is defined in this object clause, provided that nothing in this clause shall apply to a company registered under section 8. Section 8 companies 
are such companies which are not supposed to be doing any business for the earning point of view for profit point of view so object clause is not so much important for section 8 companies bifurcation of this main object ancillary objects and other objects in three ways you may be incorporate your object clause you may be insert in your object clause main object ancillary objects and other objects so before 1960 we are only incorporated with one object and another clause is here liability clause liability clause define the liability of members whether the liability is limited or unlimited that's indicated by this clause in this case of company limited by share limit liability of the members is limited only up to unpaid share part if you pay the entire amount against your shares there is no any liability if you pay the partial amount then your liability only up to unpaid share part in the case of company limited by guarantee in such cases you need to be pay this guaranteed amount at the time of call or at the time of winding up whichever is earlier and your liability is arise up to 1 year as a contributory in case of company cease to be a, a, a person cease to be a member member is here liable even after they are, that cease to be a member so capital clause is another clause the fifth clause here maybe in the case of company having a share capital this capital clause define amount of share capital with which the company is to be registered the division division of thereof share and fixed amount which amount is then required to be incorporate as a company as a registered share capital and what's the division of shares that's defined in this clause except this clause rest of the clauses you may be change with special regulation but this is the only clause which you altered with simple regulation because capital is the essential part for run a company for run a business so this clause uh, as per the scheme of law as per the scheme of companies act very simple process provided to alter this clause as per the requirement you may be change any time this clause uh, according to circumstances subscription clause refer in schedule 1 subscribers are such persons minimum number of persons who are agree to take the shares of the company in case of one person company the one person is subscriber in case of private limited minimum two persons are here subscriber in case of public limited seven persons are known as subscriber though they are they are the minimum persons who sign on each and every document of at the time of registration so memorandum of association also signed by these subscriber and signing of memorandum rule 13 of companies incorporation rule 2014 provided that memorandum should be signed by a subscriber and subscriber of the memorandum shall add his name address description and the occupation in the presence of at least one witness one witness one their sign required of the subscriber subscriber if illiterate their sign may be att uh, attested by some another person and mark the authentication or their signature this is particularly for those those who are illiterate and not sign they use the thumb impression the subscriber of the memorandum is a body corporate the memorandum shall be signed by director officer or employee which are authorized for this particular purpose subscriber of the memorandum of a foreign national residing outside india then the signature address and proof of identity shall be notarized notarized by a notary public they are it means we required some special requirement for the same how altered the memorandum of association 
you altered the object clause, name clause, register office clause and share capital clause. Share capital clause you altered with simple resolution, but in case of other clauses you need to be altered with special resolution and sometime we require the prior approval of tribunal also. Alteration of memorandum of association and the doctrine of ultra virus. Memorandum of association states the object of incorporating the company. It provides an overview of the company operation. As per the doctrine of ultra virus, the company is not supposed to bypass the boundaries set by the memorandum of association. This document defines the boundaries. You, if going beyond these boundaries, your acts are ultra virus. And beyond your scope, beyond your power, and these acts are held ultra virus. It means illegal acts. The term ultra virus is a Latin origin, meaning beyond their power, ultra virus shall null and void. These acts are null and void. There is no any importance of these acts in the eyes of law. And if company enters into any contract against the provision of the memorandum of association, it shall be ultra virus have no binding effect, no any binding effect of these document. This is ultra virus. Essentially, this ultra virus doctrine introduced to safeguard the interest of the shareholders, creditors and stakeholders. It means this ultra virus doctrine basically help for all stakeholders, shareholders, creditors, members, even then board of directors also. If they are going beyond these powers which design or drafted or given by memorandum of association, they are personally liable. So, doctrine of ultra virus prevents the company from going beyond its permitted limits of operation and Ashbury Railway carries company also decide the same and document needed for alteration, notice of the journal meeting, draft resolution altered memorandum of association and board resolution, shareholders resolution, minutes of the journal meeting, form, in particular form you need to be submit within 30 days from this resolution. Any other document may be called by the ROC in as a sporting document for the same. Uh, if we summarize this entire discussion, so we find out that memorandum of association stands as a cornerstone document in the establishment and operation of companies under the Companies Act 2013. Understanding the memorandum of association is a crucial for both entrepreneurs looking to establish a company and investors considering participation in one. Compliance, of, compliance with memorandum of association provisions and the law is the vital to ensuring the company's legitimacy and protecting the interest of stakeholders. In this context, we held that each condition is important for the governing of a corporate body and corporate governance basically based on this document and that is the guiding document for the journey of a business. Thank you.